Welcome, everybody. Welcome back to the show. I am your host, The Wolf of Crypto. You guys are tuned in for a new episode here today on The Wolf of Crypto podcast. Got a very special guest. I am very excited. We got Mr. Casey Stubbs is in the house. He has decided to come on the show. Um, I saw your resume, man. It's very extensive. I don't really want to talk about your shine. I'll go ahead and let you just, in your own words, just give us who you are. Tell us a little bit about your story because it's a pretty special one. So I, I would just love to hear from your perspective here. Awesome. Thanks for having me. And so you're the wolf of crypto. So what do I call you? Yeah, just call you just you call wolf. me wolf, man. All right. Yeah, cool. Yeah. So I've been uh, investing for a long time. Uh, I started in uh, 1996. I was in the army and I was putting all mm -hmm. my money in to the stock market mm -hmm. back in the 90s. And by the time I got out of the army, I had over $30,000 mm -hmm. in the market. I was like 23 with 30 grand back then. That was actually a lot of money. And so I'm like, oh yeah, this investing thing's pretty cool. Awesome, awesome, awesome. So I got a couple of questions here for you because I was looking over your resume here as far as your ability to create traffic funnels that convert into 250K leads. Can you walk us through the key components of building traffic funnels that consistently convert into substantial leads, such as strategies and tactics you found most effective? Well, when it comes to online stuff, it's really hard to mm -hmm. get any traction. You're starting a podcast, social media, website. There's so much stuff going on online and uh, you can be posting mm -hmm. every day, posting good content and you just never getting seen. So that's the big challenge. It, first mm -hmm. of all, is getting seen. And then once you get seen, you want to collect people's contact information. It's great to have a social media profile. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. I love it. But it's really, I found it's really effective to have their email addresses because then you can, everybody opens their emails. Yeah. Not everybody, but a lot of people open their email. If you got a YouTube channel that's rocking, you never know. YouTube might get mad at you one day and just be like, yo, we're, yeah. you're canceled. They Very do that true. all the time. But if you got the email yeah. address on your list, they can't cancel you. And so that's why having your own website, having your own email list is good because then you're not relying on the power of YouTube and Facebook and Instagram and all those guys. They don't control you. They don't own you. And other than that, you just send stuff that people like. People love trading strategies. I got a great Bitcoin trading strategy. I got a great trading strategy on a lot mm -hmm. of these cryptos that are really popular right now. And I just give away free stuff, free strategies. People love it. And that's how I get those leads. Um, and then I monetize the leads by selling products, right? Educational content. I give them free education. Then I have some premium stuff. Awesome, that I sell. awesome, awesome. And could you actually just talk a little bit about your Bitcoin strategy, maybe some other strategies that you might have for some altcoins as well? Yeah, mm. I love Bitcoin. I've been involved in crypto for a while. How about you? How long so have you been in crypto? I got into crypto back in, that was what, around like 2017? I want to say it like that was the moment where at that time where Bitcoin had went from, I think it was like eight or 9,000 and it shot up to 20 K and it was like, Whoa, this is crazy. And my, <laughs> that was insane. At that <laughs> yeah. Time. I remember and that. Like, yeah. Buddy of mine called me down and was like, Hey man, you gotta come check out this Bitcoin. I'm like, what is Bitcoin? So I go down there, we're talking, we're chopping it up and he introduced me into Bitcoin. I was like, oh, okay, let me go home and do some research. And ever since then, I've been involved in crypto. And to me, it's been just an amazing journey. Obviously, still young, obviously still getting experience. I do a little trading, play in the DeFi world as well. Um, but just even back then, that was like during the ICO. I don't know if I remember the ICO craze during that time. So yeah, so that's been my involvement. But as far as, because 250,000 leads is a, pretty significant milestone. Could you tell us like what were some like common like pitfalls or mistakes that entrepreneurs when trying to scale their traffic funnels and how they can avoid them? Could you walk us through that a little bit? I think the biggest thing is understanding that people really do want to mm -hmm. read your email. And if they do, I hear my crypto strategy, my business strategy, my investment strategy, mm -hmm. all in the same way. And 
Maybe later we'll talk about multiple streams of income because that's a real big part of what I do. But it's based on the 80-20 principle. And that is a mathematical thing by a guy named Joseph Pareto. He was like an Italian mathematician Mm -hmm. way back in the day. And he discovered that, so let's say you got 100 people in a classroom and they're all going to school. He discovered that there's going to be 20% of the people that are going to be like have really good grades and then 80% in the bottom group, right? And it's the same way in businesses, right? So if you've got a 100 businesses, 20% of the businesses are going to cover the profits. 20% is going to generate 80% of the profit. So a small group of people is going to generate most of the money, right? And that's like how taxes are, right? You got the small group of people paying most of the taxes. And so how does that apply into marketing? There's 20% of the people that are really going to be active on my email list and the 80, and they're going to make more, the top 20% of the people on my email list are going to make more money than the rest. So who do I want to focus on? I want to focus on those 20% because those are the, the money makers. So I find out who those people are and I want to send them 10 times as many emails Because those are the guys that are going to pay me. The rest, you know what? I don't pay much attention to those guys. As far as like your email campaigns, are you sending out like daily newsletters or are they weekly? Like how do you, I guess, manage that? It's a really Uh scientific thing. And fortunately for me, I got an email manager that does a lot of it, but we talk about the strategies. So it's strategic. Here's this, it applies that whole 80-20 principle. And that is if a dude opens your email, and another guy doesn't open your email, don't mail to the guy that don't open it. Mail to the one that opens it. If he opens one, what's the likelihood of him to open two? Yeah. Right? So we hit, and that helps your spam rates, right? If you got a guy who's not interested in you, he's, oh, man, you're spamming me. But then if you got a guy who loves your stuff, the guy who loves your stuff, he can't get enough of you. He wants The guy that loves you, he wants you to mail him 25 (laughs) times a day. The guy that's not opening your email, if you send him 25 emails, he's going to hunt you down and kill you. Right, right. So you got to find the people that love you. And if they open your emails, they read your emails, they click your emails, you just keep feeding them what they love, which is okay. they love you. There's, you give them like more that, of me. I like that. Now, as far as growing the online business to over $2 million, uh, per year in revenue is pretty remarkable. What were the pivotal moments or strategies that played like a crucial role? in reaching this level of success for you? Uh, You just got to keep pushing on and try a lot of new stuff. I I didn't know this email thing. I started because I lost my job in 2008 and I had no idea what I was doing. I figured, oh, I know a little bit about stock trading, so why not start a website, see what happens? And then people started Mm -hmm. reading my stuff, but then I didn't know how to make money. People were visiting the website, but I didn't know how to monetize it. So I just learned a little bit over and over. I've learned about how to monetize. I've learned about how to grow a team. And it's a matter of when you go through a a setback, you're either going to give up and say it's too hard or you're going to keep pushing. A lot of people will jump out of the gate. They're going to start a new website. They're going to start a new podcast, new email list, Mm -hmm. new trading system. Then guess what? It's easy to start. But then the grind happens. They call it the grind. And it's like where you're doing your email every day or you're doing your podcast interview every day and nobody's coming. You're not making any money. You just got to keep pushing and pushing. It's it's another principle. I'm a big principle guy. And it's the the principle of reaping and sowing, right? You got a seed. You throw that seed into the ground. And when you plant that seed, are you going to reap a harvest right away? (laughs) Yeah, It takes some time, right? People think they're going to plant the seed and tomorrow they're going to have an orchard with apples. It doesn't work that way. That's not how life works. So you got to plant the seed and you got to keep working that ground, keep working it, keep grinding. Every single day, make a little step forward. And eventually you're going to be like, oh man, I got this big harvest. And then you make a big harvest and then you get stupid because you think that you know what you're doing and you end up like burning everything and running your Mm -hmm. business into the ground. Because it seems like everybody does that. Um, And you just got to rebuild and keep going. Just keep moving, keep pushing, keep growing. 
you hit the nail on the head and do that a lot too in the crypto space where a lot of people want to see that overnight success and they just give up and they'll walk away. And from basically hearing what you've just been saying, can you walk us through what it takes to have that type of mindset? Because like you said, a lot of times people will start something, do it for maybe a month, a couple of weeks even, and then they're done. So you being successful, being able to grow a team, I'm not sure, sure how big your team is, but you could just walk us through like in your shoes, somebody that's out there right now listening, watching this, that's man. I wish I could get to that next step, but I don't know what it takes maybe up here or how to navigate. Because you could just give us like your insights on that. That's a really good question. And it's a tough one because I, part of it is your personality. I think I've always had this personality that I wanted to try new stuff and I wanted okay. to accomplish goals, mm -hmm. right? I'm a weirdo. I like goals. Some people I sit down and we're like, let's talk about our goals. And they're like, dude, but I yeah. like goals, man. I like reaching for things. I would say that's the first thing is have goals, right? I first learned about my goals is when I was young and I just, for whatever reason, I started writing some mm -hmm. stuff on a piece of paper and I wrote all my goals out on a piece of paper and I forgot about them, but I kept, they were in the back of my mind, but I wasn't looking at the piece of paper every day. Then five or six years later, I went down into my basement and I was cleaning up and I found my goals and I ended up realizing that I like hit every one of those goals that I wrote down. And so step one is to write them down. And step two is to, and I, this, I didn't do then, but I do now. And it's, I look at them mm -hmm. all the time. And I ask myself some questions like, what did I do today to help me reach my goal? Who can I reach out to, to help me reach my goal? What steps do I need to do that I didn't do? to help me reach my goal. And, I, and mm -hmm. what is my goal? And I'm also a big believer in getting help. Reach out to people. Don't be alone. Because you know what? The more that you can share your struggles with other people and what, what's going on, I feel like the better it is. A lot of people want to keep it inside. And they're like, oh, I don't want to tell them what, about my goals. I don't want to tell them about what I'm doing. They're going to steal my ideas. Now, that's a big thing yeah. in the crypto space. They're like, dude, this guy's going to steal my idea and he's going to copy everything I'm doing. And I don't get worried about that because I know it takes course, a grind yeah, a... <laughs> and they might copy my idea, but they're not going to grind like that. Like I like I grind. that. And, uh, you know, when you launched your first trading business, uh, Winners as Trading, which has generated over 6 million in revenue, could you not only go over that accomplishment, but when you first did start that first trading business, like going into it, what was your mindset? Because you just talked about some goals. Did you write down your goals for Winner's Edge Trading? Yeah. So that was pretty interesting because I was okay. out of work and I've got a long, young family, got to take care of the fam and you don't have a job. Yeah. That's pretty tough. So I was just taking a shot in the dark. I didn't really have goals. I was just trying to like, okay, maybe I can make some money. And I didn't really know what I was doing. I just... I, I tried a lot of different things and that's it. Try it. And then mm -hmm. I, it took off and that's gave me the motivation. I wasn't, I wouldn't say that I was a great grinder at that point, like I am nowadays, but I tried a lot of things and this. I saw instant success, not like uh -huh. big success, but just enough to keep me like, Oh, okay. this might work. Yeah. I started seeing people come to the website. I'm like, wait a second, there's some potential here. And I didn't really know what it was, but, Again, I got just fortunate in some ways. And, and sometimes when you work, the favor happens. But some guys came to my website and they're like, oh, I see you're getting some traffic. Would you be interested in promoting some of our educational products? And so I wasn't creating my own products, but they're like, yeah, why don't you try selling it? So I, they said, would you send an email to your list? And so at that time, I had a small list of about 5,000 people. And I sent a couple emails, just did not know what I was doing. And then later on, they're like, hey, great job on your emails. We're going to send you a check for $22,000. <laughs> and I was like, what? Whoa. I couldn't believe it. I was like blown away. And I was having another kid. And so I needed a car. So I took that money and I bought a car. I bought a $10,000 car. I bought a, a 2002. It was an old car, but I needed a big one because uh -huh. my family was getting bigger. Bought a 2002 Suburban for 11,000 bucks. 
So I took like half that money and bought a car with. And just hearing those numbers and back then, just that's mind boggling because fast forward to now that <laughs> those numbers don't even exist, but that's pretty. You, you can still get deals. You just got to look like that was uh -huh. a used vehicle, 90,000 uh -huh. miles. Probably couldn't get it for 11 grand, but, but you can I still get, find them. You gotta I got gotcha, you. I got gotcha. you. Now, overcoming obstacles is part of any journey and you've already spoken on some of them. Could you share like a personal anecdote where um, your mindset played a pivotal role in overcoming a significant challenge or a setback during your business endeavors? Yeah, so I can tell you a really messed up story if you Let's want to hear, hear a messed up story. Okay. Yeah, this is le totally legit. I'm with my 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 buddy and I, he's the guy I hired, my first hire, and we're going to do this new product because we just learned how to create products and create a funnel and sell. So we got all of our partners involved. And so we, this is a great little secret to grow your list. I talked to all my friends that had email lists. I'm like, you guys got to mail my product and I'll sell, I'll give you 20% commission on everything you sell. So we were able to talk those guys into mailing for us. And we generated a huge email list. And we sold, this was in 2010. Okay. So this was still back in the day. And I was new. I was really new. Maybe it was 2011, but I was really new and the thing sold like crazy. We sold $550,000 worth of stuff, right? We paid out all of our partners and we still had a ton of money. And so it was great, but, but I made a really big mistake and I told everybody that I, it was a trading product. And I said, look, if we don't get the results that you want, we're going to re refund and it's in a one year period. Okay. So at the end of the year, I made 500,000 bucks, but at the end of the year, like 80 some percent of the people said, I don't like it. I want a refund. I had already spent that 500,000. That was long gone. And now I got all these people that say, you owe me. And so I think I probably got like $350,000 in refunds of people wanting their money back, which mm -hmm. I did not have. And so me trying to like not go out of business and want to keep my reputation good because I'm a man of my word. If I say I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it. I had to create a couple special videos where I'm like, look, I don't got the money, right? You got to just be transparent. I don't have the money. I spent it, but I'll pay you. You just got to be patient. And I made that video. I sent it out. And when people ask for money, I'm like, okay, I got a list. You're on the list, bro. You're on the list. I'm going to I'm going to pay you back and I just grinded and eventually after probably a year I paid everybody back. It was a painful lesson, but I survived and now I don't do refunds. Uh, yeah. Like <laughs> yeah, once you get lit by that fire, you learn your lesson after that one. So, it's an incredible story and glad to hear that you were able to persevere through that whole experience. Another question I have for you is many aspiring entrepreneurs struggle with self-doubt or fear of failure, how would you recommend overcoming some of these mental barriers to stay focused and motivated towards achieving some type of business goal or goals? So you mentioned mindset a couple times and it really, your mind is, your mind, you got to work on it. It's a, it, your mind has to be trained because if you let it, if you let your thoughts rule your life, you're going to be miserable because you're going to believe all the lies that your mind tells you because your mind actually does lie to you, right? Your emotions, you feel bad and your mind will tell you stuff like, dude, you, you're messing up. You're stupid. You don't got what it takes or whatever. There's a verse in the Bible that says, be renewed by the transforming of your yeah. mind. And so I got that from the word of God. And the way that I apply that is when I get one of those thoughts that comes in that says, you're not going to make it, you're going to fail, you're stupid. I've just trained myself to throw those away. Nope, that's a lie. It's not true. I'm going to make it. And I just replace the negative thoughts with positive thoughts. And here's what's happened. It's training. Everything in life is based on training and discipline. I know that sounds crazy, but as you're, you train your own mind, you start to develop skills like your, those thoughts don't come right. as much, right? And then you don't have to really even try to get rid of them because they, your mind knows, exactly. don't go there with me. 
because I'm going to replace them. And so, yeah, just can, don't let your mind go, run wild. Don't play scenarios of like worry is one of the worst things you can possibly do because most of the stuff that happens in your mind is not going to happen. You know, and thinking about what other people think about you and what they're talking about. And that's all speculation that you have no clue about. And it's just going to cause you stress. So instead of worry, I just try to think about scenarios that are on the good side. Like, okay, I could, this could happen. That could happen. I'm going to believe for this. Yeah. Faith is a big deal. Like what you believe, if you believe and you take those actions. I've had just so many visions and beliefs that actually come to pass. And that's all part of practicing healthy mindset. That was heavy, man. That was heavy. Appreciate that again. As far as adaptability, that's pretty crucial, especially ever in the ever evolving landscape of online business. How do you stay ahead of like trends and pivot your strategies to remain relevant and successful in your industry? I think strategy is really important. And so I try to, to get a key strategy mm -hmm. and then execute. Right. So uh, again, that's been a big thing for helping me become successful is finding a strategy and then executing those plans. Cause even in the, when I told you that story about me where I, I had the big failure leading up to make that much money, I had a pretty good strategy. I had to convince all these people to mail for my product. And so I had a very strategic plan of how to convince those people. Uh, to mail for me. And the thing is that the, the plan actually took about a year to execute. And it was how to win favor with those people, how to make those people like me. I wasn't just going to sit there and shill. They call <laughs> that in the crypto market, yeah. shilling. Not just going to shill. So, yo, yo, come mail for me. No, I proved to you that I'm going to do something for you first. I'm going to mail for you. I'm mm -hmm. going to make you money. And then, then they're going to be like, okay, this guy's a good dude. I'll do it for him because he did it for me. A big part of it is just serving other people. If you've got a list, you got to do shout outs, man. Yeah. You got a podcast and social media, do shout outs on how awesome everybody else is. Look at this dude over here. He's great. Look at him over here. He's really cool. You know what? Go buy this guy's book. It's awesome. And then you do that. And then it's that whole reaping and sowing yeah. thing. It comes back. Right, that comes back on you. you you're, I like to be the world's biggest cheerleader for everyone else. I'm not going to tell everybody about how great I am. I'm going to talk about yeah. all these other great people. And then stuff comes back to me, man. Wow. That's pretty neat, man. That's pretty neat. Hopefully, people are taking this, writing down some notes, because these are these are some pretty fire notes here. Now, as far as creating effective sales funnels, like what role does understanding your target audience play? Because I feel like some people might not know the full lengths of really how to capture a specific audience. How do you ensure your funnels resonate with and address the needs of your ideal customers? Okay, so here's what you do, right? This is a, a okay. hot tip. You call them on the phone and if they're local, yo, come have coffee. If you like coffee, <laughs> which I do. Let's go have some coffee, man. And I just had a, a coffee with one of my customers last week and I'm, you feel their pain. The way that you have an effective traffic funnel, if you're selling something, you get to know other people's pain and you help them. So I just had coffee with a guy last week. He said, I'm 65 years old. I'm working, but I can't retire because I don't make enough money. I need to make money in the markets. I need more money. I'm going to have to work until I'm 75 and I don't want to. I want to retire now. And I'm like, yo, man, I, I feel your pain. This is bad. This is tough. I'm going to try to help you. And connecting with people on a real level enables you to write a marketing campaign. And I'm not just doing it to write an effective campaign. Yeah, I really want to help them. But if you're not going to write an effective campaign because an effective marketing campaign solves a problem and you got to know their pain. You got to know their problem and you got to know that you can help them with that problem. He said it. That's a hot tip, hot tip. That is something <laughs> I might have to try to put that to use myself. Wow. Appreciate that. Now, balancing ambition with practically is essential for sustainable growth. 
how do you set realistic yet ambitious goals for your business? And what are some strategies that you employ to ensure that you stay on track to achieve them? Because some people will come in and they'll set a huge goal that might be overreach. How do you, can you walk us through and give another, maybe a hot tip for people out there that are watching and listening <laughs> right now? <laughs> this is actually my uh -huh. weakness, right? This is my big weakness. You <laughs> my weakness. I, I've all, my goals are always too big. And it's an ambition mm -hmm. thing. I get, I don't know why I'm just ambitious. And there's a couple of things I can never do. Number one is I always think I'm going to make more mm -hmm. money than what I'm going to make. And number two, I think it's going to happen faster <laughs> than what it's going to happen. And so I'm like, okay, we're going to do this by this time. And I always think that jobs are going to, when you're managing a team, you're like, okay, mm -hmm. this should take 10 minutes. And they're like, I've been working on it two weeks. I'm like, what? It's not done yet. Yeah. Like, what are you doing? And so like my first couple of products that I created, I made really good money, but I was actually depressed. I think I am wow. almost cried because <laughs> I don't think I cried, but uh -huh. I don't like crying. And is so my first product that I wanted to launch, I wanted mm -hmm. to make a million bucks. That was my goal, the one million dollar mark. And I ended up making mm -hmm. two hundred thousand. But instead of being happy that I made two hundred dude, I just made two hundred thousand dollars in two weeks. I should have been like jumping for joy, but instead I was like, but I didn't hit my million Ooh. dollar goal. And I was beating myself up pretty hard. But now I've learned, you know what? I'm just taking one step at a time and I don't beat myself up over that because I know it's a process and it's going to take time and just keep moving forward and enjoy the, don't focus on results mm. too much, right? Results are important. We do things for results, but focus on, the things that you got to do to get those results. Mm -hmm. Here's a good example. If you're going to try, if you're trying, I'm older, I'm in an office, <laughs> I gain weight because I'm not out hitting the uh -huh. gym as much as I should. I can focus on the goal of losing weight or I can focus, I could make my goal the activity that's going to cause me to lose weight. Okay, what activity? Logging mm -hmm. my food and hitting the gym that's my goal. My goal is to hit the gym for two days. My goal is to log my food calories for two days. And if I hit those goals, I know that the results are going to come. Don't say, oh, my goal is 10 pounds because then when I don't hit it, mm -hmm. I'm not happy. My goal is, oh, I did my goal. I worked out every day this week. Make your goal the actual activity that's going to produce the results because the results yeah. will come automatically if you I have the right you. goals. I got you. I like that. Now we're going to shift gears a little bit, talk a little bit more about the market. Sounds like to me, you actually started in stocks and then obviously as crypto became into this bigger picture, you obviously probably shifted your way into crypto. Could you just tell us about your early days and the markets, how you saw success what were some, maybe some key strategies, and then we'll shift on into the crypto space as well. Yeah, so I did start with stocks because crypto didn't exist back then. And so I started, I joined the army and I knew a little bit about stocks from my dad. So I just put all of my money in the market. Mm -hmm. I was really fortunate and just enjoyed that. So every, it, it, see, this is another thing that everybody that's listening, when you to talk about focusing on your, don't focus so much mm -hmm. on the results, on the goal of the, the activity. One of my goals is to always put my money i got two first i want to give 10 mm percent, -hmm. and then second i want to invest 10 percent. so as soon as i get paid i'm taking 20 percent gotcha. off the top no matter what like that's my discipline that's my goal because i know that's going to mm -hmm. yield a good fruit it's going to yield a good result so i would just tell anybody don't buy stuff and and invest afterwards oh man if i have enough money afterwards then i'll put some money in the market got you put the money first every time you get paid it goes in every time because here's a, a little stat for you that if you start investing at 40 years old and you want a million dollars by your 65 and you get 10 percent mm -hmm. return every year you got to start out and put in 800 bucks a month at 40 if you start at 20 you only got to do $2 a month, but nobody does. Nobody yeah. does it. 
And it's amazing because look, if you start out with a thousand bucks, the you put in, if you put in a hundred a month, the first year yeah. you're making twelve hundred. But then you take the ten percent return, like whatever, if it's crypto, stocks, whatever, ten percent. That first year, ten percent of the twelve hundred yeah. is one hundred and twenty. But then next year, your ten percent gain is two forty, and then the next year after that. It's thirty six hundred. So every year your paycheck goes up, and then towards the end, you don't even need to put in because it's oh, you put your hundred bucks a month yeah. in, but it's like a drop because it's the return on investment that is making the money. And that's like how I do crypto. You know, last year or a couple of years ago, I got involved in in Shib Shiba oh, Inu yeah, crypto. Shiba. <laughs> okay, and I love it, man. That's my number really? one holding. Okay. okay? Now, listen, I got in at the top of 21. I was uh -huh. in crypto before that, but I saw this one going crazy. So I'm like, I'm getting in. So I got in and I bought in really high. I don't know if you know the charts of that. It's yeah. 0.007. Four zeros and a seven. And then it went all the way down till it went down <laughs> yeah. huge, five zero. So what I did was I just kept buying Every single time I made money, mm -hmm. I put into it. I put into it. I put into it. And I got my dollar cost way down. So my initial cost was down to 0. 0.00007. Mm -hmm. Kept investing. And now my costs are like 0. 0.000011. So I got my average cost down. And then last month we had a pop. And I am up. I'm up huge. I'm up huge. And you know what? I think it's gonna. It's got another oh, yeah. big run coming. I think it's got at least two more. And so we're talking. It, it's gonna be insane. Yeah, I'm actually really excited. I've been playing. I don't know if you're familiar with the Solana blockchain. Do you play in that space a little bit? I'm. I don't have any of the Solana meme coins, but I have mm. Solana, and I've been using the Orca uh -huh. Solana DeFi, where I've been providing liquidity, uh -huh. collecting interest, and my Solana stuff really you, well. Because I've been. It was funny. <laughs> excuse me. I actually had a goal with Solana because when it had crashed all the way down to fifteen, twenty dollars, and I'm like, yo, man, I'm taking as much liquidity I have right now, and I'm about to just dump into Solana because I know it's gonna it's gonna have a crazy run. We're gonna get back up to a hundred dollars, and I wanted to farm for airdrops. So you fast forward to right now, I had gotten airdrop from Pith, which Pith had hit a dollar like the other day. I'm not sure if you follow Jupiter. That that token, that airdrop, that brought me in a couple of bands on that one. And then as far as MarginFi, Camino, I'm trying to think of the other DeFi platform, Meteora. There's so many different platforms I've been playing in. And just like you said earlier, reaping, playing those seeds. And just just explodes out of nowhere, and now I'm like, man, I'm just doing this collecting interest, providing liquidity, because roll it back in. We take that interest and roll it back in. What do you got to do to get so the airdrop? Normally, obviously, you got to have a Solana base wallet, right? So I use Phantom, and like for Jupiter, it was easy. You were you needed to use their platform, so they had swapping. DCA, uh, you were able to bridge, and they had perps on there as well. So as long as you were just doing activities, moving money on their platform during this uh, time frame from, I forget the exact dates, but during that time frame, depending on how much liquidity you were providing, they drop some tokens, and they also have a DAO as well. So they're going to be launching some other tokens like that Win meme coin that launch. I got that airdrop as well. So Solana has been <laughs> really good to me the last couple of months. And like you said, like a lot of people don't take into account the matter that if you're getting returns on a monthly basis, a yearly basis, you're just compounding, you're, you're compounding your money. Cause I always have the mindset of right. what I want money to constantly be working because if it's not like, you're not gonna, you're not gonna get to that next level. Or if you want to have a million or if you want to live off passive income, you got to have it basically planted in different ways. And 
I want to hear some of your strategies when it comes to even short term, mid term, long term. Do you put it into those three funnels, or are you just a long term person? Could you just pick a pick your brain on that one? Yeah, that's a great question, and that's really cool to hear about the. I got a buddy who mm -hmm. put seven thousand in when it last year when it was down low, like you said, and it's pushing sixty k yeah. right now. And Solana and being in a DAO yeah. is really cool too, because if you get into a DAO, a lot of times when they'll, well, the, I'm in, okay. a, in quite a few DAOs, right? And so I want to be in as many as I can afford to get into, because the way that it works, if you guys are listening, there's a, probably a lot of different ways, but a lot of it is you got to have X mm -hmm. amount of tokens to get in. So you buy in and it's great to buy in on the launch of the token because then, you know, you got all these guys that are holding, mm -hmm. they become the whales. You become mm -hmm. a whale of a group. You get all the inside information. You build these relationships. Business is done by strategic relationships. So you're hanging out with all the other whales. You're all working together to market and to figure out how to make this token grow. And then you can work with other DAOs. And that's mm -hmm. why I'm in multiple. But the other thing I wanted to say is crypto bear markets yes. are the way to make money. It's so great to have a bear market, right? We're getting ready for the bull market. I'm really excited about it. But the problem is crypto bear markets are so heavy mm -hmm. that everybody bails. And if you just keep putting in, that's where the money is, right? And again, like Bitcoin has had some great bull markets and bear markets. And if you just kept sticking with it on the second market run, you're going to be crushing it. That didn't really answer your question. No, of though. course, I just yeah, to yeah, talk but to answer. Yeah, to answer the question, I do. I believe that you should be strategic, like I said before. But okay, I've got a long-term portfolio. I've got a cash mm -hmm. flow portfolio, and then I have maybe midterm. So I take my short term. I want to get some cash out of. I'll do like short-term mm -hmm. stuff with that. But then I will try to, it's same thing when you take your, what you were talking about with the interest, you want to roll that out into a different, maybe a long-term yeah. portfolio, right? And so uh, be strategic about it. You want to, you don't spend all your money, um, but you put your money to work. Let your money is a tool. Money's not good. <laughs> it's not evil. Yeah. It's a tool. Use it, put the tool to work, take that money. Put it into something that's going to produce got more you, money. Got you. And I actually kind of want to go back to before you answer the question, DAOs, because Jupiter is going to be like my first DAO where I'm actually going to try to really participate and be a part of the boats and put my feedback and stuff. And with that DAO, it all just depends on how many tokens you lock up with Jupiter. Anybody can get in. But what's cool about their DAO is as you participate, and that's how you get tokens of all these launch pad projects that are going to be uh, upcoming on their platform. So that long-term growth is going to be really cool to see. And I'm really excited to be a part of that. But how many DAOs are you uh, a part of right now? Three, and I'm trying to get into some more. And one of them, most of them are like, so Shiba Inu has their, a new blockchain that they launched called Shibarium. And so they launched that in, so Shiba, I'm, okay. that's my token, okay. right? <laughs> well, Shiba launched their blockchain and there's a lot of new projects okay. jumping on there just like the solana and so i'm on that blockchain and there's one called sharby mm -hmm. i tried to get in it i was late and i'm like yo how much to get into your dow like, you need 30 billion tokens and then i did the math and it was 30 grand i'm like oh man uh -huh. i'm gonna try to get in but maybe not right in one shot but then some of the other ones it was only two grand to get in um so uh i'm in one there's a token on there called banana mm -hmm. I'm in that. Um, it's just getting on the ground. It's not like Soul. It's not mm -hmm. like really established. It's it's just starting out. Um, but I thought that was a good place for me to get started because because it, there's a lot of growth opportunity. Got you, got you. But I'm gonna check out the Solana. It's hard to there, you can't manage all of them. Yeah, there's so many that, of them. You can't. That's be the thing, and that's like a them. problem I have is there's so many different blockchains, and you want to be able to be involved in all of them. I like obviously Solana. I like Cosmos as well because they have their own thing as well. Like when it comes to airdrops, I like their DeFi platforms and their DEXs over there as well. 
And it's, I want to also get a part of, I believe it's like what Avalanche. I've been looking up them and looking at yeah. them and reading about what they're about. And it's just, man, I feel like sometimes when you're, you get involved in crypto, there's just not enough time because there's so many projects and it doesn't sleep. And I know you say your top coin is Shiba. Could you tell us about your other portfolio coins that you're watching or might be investing or, you know, any next moves that you have on the, on your radar? Yeah. So it is my number one and I don't have really mm -hmm. much else right now in the crypto space. Mm -hmm. I had Solana and I rolled all of it out into that. It, it goes along and I have a stock portfolio, but it, it for me, I feel like you want to, and this is not normal advice. A lot of people will say diversify, but I feel like you try to find the thing that mm -hmm. you think is going to go up the most and put go all mm -hmm. in on one thing rather than they say, don't put all your eggs in one basket. But I'm like, put all your eggs in one basket because when it moons, you're yeah. going to make more money. And so I try to really laser in on what I thought was going to be the, the biggest return. And I don't, I don't like to diversify. And I do that with stocks too, right? So I'm trying to find some of the best stocks and I do diversify a little bit. I have 10 stocks. But I'm trying to find the ones that are going to really rock, right? So, for example, in stock mm. market, NVIDIA is amazing. Go look at the NVIDIA chart. It is on fire. Yeah. And uh, it's a company that I think is going to continue to grow. Yeah. Just trying to, that 80-20 yeah. principle, find the best of the best and go all in on the best. You got Michael Jordan. I'm an older guy, right? You got Michael Jordan. He's the best basketball player. Who are you going to yeah, put your exactly. money on, right? Go ahead, go put it on the best. Don't wait, wait mess around with <laughs> now, the other guys. Trading, investing, obviously just being financially. There are emotions that do come involved. They play a significant role when it comes to these decisions. I've been a part of some times where it's like, ah, uh, how do you maintain discipline and control over emotions during periods of market volatility? or when facing potential losses, especially in the crypto space, because you can see <laughs> your coin go down 50%, 40%, 60% quickly. What are some keys for you to help with your emotions? Yeah, that's a tough one too, because for crypto, I'm just, okay, look, the bear market's here. I think it's coming out. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to keep holding. I don't want to sell anything for a loss. I think the hardest part is going to be to actually take profit. Yeah, it's tough. Um, because like, I don't know where I already, I've already got my expectations. I'm thinking, okay, we got all time high. Look, Bitcoin just hit all time high. Where's it going? My guess for Bitcoin was mm -hmm. 250K. That's where I think it's going to go mm -hmm. on this bull market. But then if it goes from 250 back down to the old all time high at 69, are you going to hold it from all the way from 250 all the way down? Or are you going to take profit somewhere? So. Uh, having a good exit strategy is good. And then thinking mm -hmm. long-term helps for emotions. Trying the, one of the things I mentioned about making your goals, the activity instead of the result helps with emotion, right? So if my goal is to put a hundred bucks a month into crypto and I accomplish that, mm -hmm. then I can be happy and feel good about that I accomplished my goal. Mm -hmm. If my goal is to hit 5,000% a month on returns, then I'm going to go through a lot or not lose money when you lose it. And yeah, and it, focus on the activity, keep your eyes on big picture, try to be even keeled and understand that you're going to have ups and downs. Don't look at it like it's a get rich quick or gambling because most people get involved in markets and crypto because they got a financial problem right? They're hurt. Just like I said, when you sit and have coffee, you mm -hmm. find out what their problem is. Most people get into these markets because they got a problem. And if you think that it's going to solve your problem, it's actually not. It's going to make it worse, whether it's crypto, stocks, whatever. It's like going to a casino. You <laughs> act like a fool and you end up losing your money or you fall for scams. Crypto is yeah. full of scammers. You're going to fall for a scam because you're so desperate. Scammers can sense 
people that are hurting. They find hurting people and they go after them because they're stupid, because they believe anything and they want this financial pain to be solved so bad, they'll just make dumb decisions. Understand that it's mm -hmm. going to take work. You're going to have to solve a problem. You're going to have to go through ups and downs. And I did get scammed too. I got scammed in 2018, 2019. I was on Telegram. So again, I'm a computer guy. I'm on the computer every day. I have an online business. I know what these guys do yeah. and I still got scammed. I was on Telegram and I was in a crypto community and uh, the guy DM, I, I posted in the group, hey, I need some help with my wallet. And so this guy DM'd me, oh, I'll help you. And he faked me out. He got my wallet and emptied it out, $70,000. Yeah. Those are the always the tough lessons. I've had those lessons where Discord was for me. I was in a Discord group, clicked on that wrong link. It was one of those grabber wallets and boom, all my money was gone. I like the fact that you were saying that the whole 10% when it comes to investing, because I feel like when people ask the question like, oh, I don't know like how much money to start with because I know I see X, Y, and Z make this my money. And I always try to tell people it's based on situation to situation. And I always try to tell them like, hey, don't come into it with any emotions. Just try to start small because for me initially when I got into crypto, that's how my strategy started was like I would throw in like a hundred bucks here, a couple hundred bucks over here, just to get my feet wet, get an idea of, okay, how does this all work? And then once I seen some success, obviously during that time, you probably remember that crypto winter for two years, that bear market really helped me see some success in those early days where I got confident enough that I told myself, if I get to another bear market, if I have more liquidity on hand, now I'll be able to come in there with actually bigger positions and see that same return on investment that I was getting on those little smaller investments. Now I'm seeing on the bigger investments because even like you mentioned, when you do put a lot of your funds into one coin, yes, you're going to get those big returns. And I'm Part of me sometimes always has that bell. Oh, I, I want to put like a lot in one coin, but at the same time, I like to diversify because I know, hey, if I can get 10% over here, 20% over here, maybe like 40% over here, and they look on a month to month basis, you're like, oh man, my money is really growing. And now that we're on this bull market right now, all those seeds I've been planting, the results have come to the point where my portfolio now is almost at 60K. And my goal for me was like, yo, I want to get to 100. And then from there, let's get to a quarter of mils. Everything that you've been saying, man, has really been head on. I'm hoping that people that are watching and listening are really taking some notes because you can really make some good money in obviously stocks, crypto. But like you've been saying, you got to do the work. And I got a couple of questions left here for you before we wrap up the show. As far as online trading platforms, like what advice would you have for individuals that's looking to start to trading like independently? Because some people, that's another question. They don't like, they're like, I don't know where to start. So what would you recommend? Do you have some like resources that you can give to the audience here? Like you said, you, there's, you start small because there's a lot to learn. Right. You don't want to just jump in with a ton of money because you're going to you're going to mess up. So just start small. And then when you have that investment in there, then that kind of ties you into the learning and the education. You're like, OK, I got money in here. I got to learn now. But I like mm -hmm. Robinhood personally because it's easy. You get it set up. and It's not the best trading platform. If you become an advanced trader, you might want to upgrade to like mm -hmm. Charles Schwab or something. But for beginners, they mm -hmm. should try out Robinhood. Because for one is it gives, it bridges you into the stock market mm -hmm. and the crypto world. I'm a Solana guy, so I would buy m my mm -hmm. USDC coin and I would on Robinhood and send it directly to my phantom wallet, which then I could use to buy Sol, right? So it was a really easy way to get into crypto mm -hmm. through Robinhood, right? And there's a lot of learning to get into crypto with the wallets and stuff, but Robinhood is a great bridge. You can get, it doesn't have a lot of the blockchains. I really wish Robinhood mm -hmm. would get a few more, but it is a good one because you can then send it to a couple of the gotcha. key wallets. Gotcha. Okay. 
Yeah, because I know you use Robinhood. I'm curious to hear your thoughts. I'm pretty sure you were using the platform during that time where uh, GameStop and all those stocks were going crazy high, and then they uh, put a... Yeah, I was mad at okay. Robin Hood for that. I was really upset. Yeah, like I wasn't uh -huh. trading GameStop or I wasn't trading a lot with Robin Hood then, but I was just mad that they wouldn't let you sell your... They wouldn't let you yeah. sell your Robin Hood, or not your Rob, your GameStop, and so it really screwed a lot of people over, and so I, I was kind of I got you, I got you. Now... As far as this word patient, this is, I feel like this is a word that needs to be really emphasized because a lot of times, again, we've been already talking about it earlier in the show, people are always wanting to see that early success, over the night success. How do you strike a balance between seizing lucrative opportunities and exercising that patience to wait for the right moment to execute trades or any different investing that you're doing. One thing that helps with, with patience is if you have to trade, I know some guys are like, oh, I want to be in the market. I want to be doing something all the time. And that's my one friend actually set up a, a short term account, mm -hmm. just a little bit of money so that he can always do crazy stuff right? It's his crazy money. Oh, GameStop. I'm going to go all in on GameStop. So he uses that small account just to get his like <laughs> his aggression out, his craziness. Like I'll yeah. be crazy in this account and then over here I'll have to. And I feel like sometimes that's a little difficult, but it is it works. You could mm -hmm. do that. And another thing I do sometimes is if I see something that looks good, I won't put everything mm -hmm. in at, at once, like for a trade. I'll be like, okay, this is probably a pretty good price. I'll put a piece of it in here. I'll separate my portfolio a little bit. And then if it goes down, I'll maybe add a little bit more. And I love adding in. And then when it takes off, you really do well that way. Yeah. And again, patience helps with having a long-term mm. outlook. It's not overnight. What happens is you get overnight success, but it's usually, it takes time. I actually just did a post on my, I think it was on my email mm -hmm. or Twitter or something. I said, you know what? This the SHIB trade I had it was over an overnight success, but it was an overnight success that took three <laughs> years to happen. <laughs> but I was consistently dumping in every single week yeah. for three years, and then all of a sudden, yeah, overnight and that's, success. I feel like that feeling, that success is always just it's like a euphoric feeling. And for me, it was Solana because I had threw in about. 23 2400 around that 20 dollar 22 kind of price range and then i come back and i look at it now and i'm like oh okay now it's closer to about 20 grand so i'm just like wow look at that that's and huge that's <laughs> returns dude that's 10x so let me ask you this what's your what's your take profit strategy did you take profit yet do you cuz i was looking at uh -huh. the solana all time high i think it, I don't want to take anything until after that. And I think that it could even yeah. go 4X, right? So I'm thinking that Solana could get four or 500 on this bull market. And so the question is, how do you manage your money? Do you take it, try to hit a certain level, sell, and then wait for the next bear market, then load up? Like, what's so, your strategy? As of late, because like we've been talking, strategies constantly change depending on the markets. but for Solana right now, where I'm currently at, obviously when we get to that 250, I think that's where I'll take my initial investment out and probably take maybe like 10% profit at that level. And then okay. Okay. I'm going to be like, okay, I know this next bull market is going to hit some new all-time high. And then we get to that point, I want to tell myself to probably try to take out maybe 30 to 40 percent put it into a stable coin and wait for a bear market to obviously come back and reload because even right now like i'm watching solana i'm like i could still even dump in here and there because i'm still gonna get a little small x's here so anytime i see a little dump and Solana has a couple of different tokens that i'm like trying to get that 20 30 40 percent within a seven day period because those coins, you can get those. So I've been 
playing with that, using that strategy where it's, okay, let me go play in this coin, get that profit right there, then come back, put it back into Solana anytime it drops and just continue to hodl. But yeah, that, that initial investment is definitely getting taken out when we get to 250. And then I'll take, like I said, I'll take out some profit there. But again, it's always tough because you're like, oh, I know it might go up a little bit more. And I'm like, okay, let's. Well, that's so hard. Like I, for example, with my SHIB, mm -hmm. it just hit 45. Okay. It hit 45. If I would have taken my profit yeah. at 45, it went from 45 all the way back to 25, almost a 50% retracement. Yeah. I would have sold up there and then reloaded on the drop. I would have doubled yeah. my tokens. And then when it hits the all-time high, I would have doubled my profit. But instead, I held through the downturn. But the problem is yeah. the timing's so tough. So what I've been doing recently to try to alleviate that is I've been keeping my main core position, but then I've been just doing small pulls, right? Get a pop, I'm going to pull a little bit off. A drop, I'm going to add a little bit. So I'm like just grabbing little uh -huh. day trades here and there while maintaining big, yeah, my yeah. big bag. And I'm trying to, and it's funny because I have part of that strategy as far as putting a lot, I put a lot into it. And a part of me is it's going to pop off at the most random times. And then when it does, I'm just going to go ahead and take out that profit because I'm staking with them as well. They also have a liquid staking protocol. And that's another thing I've been getting myself involved with. I'm not sure if you're familiar with liquid staking, but that's been a huge thing for me lately because I'm like, oh, I can stake my Solana. So here's my understanding is you stake it and then you get another token to, to go spend somewhere else. I don't quite understand how it works. It's so it's just doesn't make sense to me. Like, okay, my token's over here. Then they give me another token I can go spend somewhere else. But then what if I lose that other token? Do I have to pay my other token back? That's yeah. it's just, it's almost like creating free money. <laughs> I don't quite get it. It's almost, yeah, like a Federal Reserve, we're printing, raising rates and printing money. I yeah, think. at least from my understanding, from what my experience has been, you stake it, let's say, mm -hmm. on Marinade, right? And Marinade gives you these MSO tokens. With those tokens, you can go play in the DeFi world and then do the same thing you would normally do with your Solana by trading and investing to other tokens. But when you lose any MSO, that will reflect on your soul that's been staked. Um, but it's interesting because like the price obviously changes once you get to a liquid token. Like Blaze is another liquid staking protocol. I've been playing with that one. But I've been taking the liquid tokens, going to the different DEXs and stuff like that, and swapping, trading. And like I said, anytime I get that profit, put it back into the liquid tokens or put it back into Solana and just continue to watch the stack. But I think that's going to really wrap it up, at least for this particular episode. I really want to thank you, Casey, for actually coming on here, just letting us pick your brain and getting to know you a little bit better here. For those of you out there that's watching and listening, I highly recommend that you guys go check out Casey. He has a Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube. I'll definitely leave some links down below. That way you guys can go follow him. If you guys choose to, he's giving some pretty good advice, some hot takes here, but that's going to wrap it up for today's episode. I want to thank y'all for tuning in. Again, I want to thank Casey. In case you got any last words for the show here in our audience. No, I just really thank you for letting me be on the show and it was great to share. Great getting to know you. Hopefully the audience can get some out of it and they do want to check out some of my stuff. They can go to my website. It's called Awesome. Well, there y'all have it right there. I am your host, the Wolf of Crypto. Y'all have been tuned in watching the Wolf of Crypto podcast. Until the next time, y'all take it easy. Make sure y'all be safe out there. Remember, crypto is for not the weak. Make sure you always do your research, due diligence, because you don't want to be scammed. It's happened. You've heard it from me. You heard it from Casey. It, it can't happen to us. So always do your research. Till the next time, y'all. Take care.